So, basically, the floor in my house is fucked, the house is actually sinking. So, right now, I'm in a caravan in the countryside. I've brought a ton of books I've been meaning to read, a lot of DVDs I've been meaning to watch, I'm out running most days and catching a bit of sun. Well, except on days like this. How wonderful is that? This is all filler mind. When I really want to enrich myself, culturally, physically, and mentally, I boot up the computer I brought with me and I play some hatred. Oh, I also have no internet access down here, so if this goes up within the month of July 2015, that means I'm currently in a pub using their Wi-Fi. If it goes up in 2016, this means I'm back at home and the council are probably ahead of schedule. It also means I can't download a million game covers and trailers to cram into this video. So, on to business. Hatred. First release of Polish developers, Destructive Creations. They probably learned a few lessons along the way making Hatred. Their marketing team definitely learned a whole lot fucking more. The game courted controversy and sold on it pretty bloody well. It's a bleak game about shooting people in the face just because this guy wants to. In black and white, no less. Any negative press, any condemnation of how violent it is, only fueled the image it was trying to create for itself. As for my feelings on the controversy, well, I do enjoy looking at angry people from a safe distance. I want to say I didn't care much either way, but it did work on me. I bought the game on the day of release. I mean, it did help that it was my birthday and I had some dosh to burn. It's like the stars aligned. Let's put it this way. I enjoy shooting virtual people in the face. I have shot a lot of virtual people in the face. If I could somehow pull up the figures telling me just how many virtual people I have shot in the face, it would probably be concerning. Least of all because it would mean someone was tracking that. Regardless, no matter how violent hatred was, in terms of virtual people shot in the face, it was only going to be a drop in the bucket for me. Hatred isn't the first game to feature mass murder. Not by a long shot. Take near enough any free roaming game ever. It's not even the first game built solely around spree killing. At its heart, you could describe it as Hotline Miami on sedatives. Or Postal 1 on a newer engine. Which Postal 1 soon will be, by the by. The issue of the controversy comes from the context in which he's killing things. I just want to kill things. Whereas to me, that just cuts to the heart of the matter. Something Hatred Man is a big fan of doing. Let's get the story out of the way first, because yeah, there is one. It opens with Hatred Man in his basement. Despite the explosions he causes down there regularly, no one seems to mind all that much. He then kills someone and thinks, Oh, that's a bit Moorish. So he nips My off upstairs, grabs an assault rifle, politely introduces himself as not important, and he just starts shooting people. At some point, the police get involved. Not with the shooting people, I mean with stopping it. He goes on a couple of sprees, and while not important, it's a bit too stony-faced to admit it most of the time, he's having so much fun. He's a kid in a monochrome candy store. Can you hear your guardian angel crying? I can. At some point along the way, he realizes there's a nuclear power plant, a hopper, skip, and a train trip away. So he pulls a cheeky raid on an army base for some C4, nips off to the power plant, and not only plants the bombs, but decides to make doubly sure by overloading the reactors. It doesn't work. He's here! So, the time has come. <laughs> I only wonder if those explosives will work. And as he ascends to heaven, he sees it was not all for nothing. We then learn Not Important was actually billed as the antagonist, but that's not the joke everyone, including me, is making. I love Not Important. I'm sorry, but he's clearly a joke. Just listen to his dialogue. I never thought it would be 
so easy to slaughter my whole neighborhood. One nation under death. I am genocide. But enough fun. I must get to the power plant. How do I overload the reactors? What? No, never! It will cause a massive explosion! Are you insane? That's what I want, and you will tell me. Or I'll make you die. Very fucking ah! slowly. People were offended by this delightfully hammy bastard. He's fucking hilarious. He's bumbling. He's an idiot. He did not know he'd do half as well as he did. He's as surprised about it as anyone, and he's making this murder spree up as he goes along. The cutscenes where he churns out his edgelord dialogue is a treat, and you may think I'm giving them too much credit, but I honestly believe that this is at least somewhat self-aware. It's simply too far gone for it to be anything but that. The fact that there are shoutouts to Postal 1 and 2 in the dialogue only reinforces that for me. Only my weapon understands me. Soil is hungry, and Soil is also thirsty. All in all, the story is dumb and bare bones, and probably more than anyone expected. Right, gameplay. This game also has that. It's an isometric shooter where, by and large, you point at civilians and make them corpses. I've got to admit I don't play many top-down shooters, so my point of reference is a little bit limited compared to most other things that I review. That said, how average it actually is still shines right through. Right off the bat, not important is quite limited movement-wise. Save for his truly commendable cardio, he can just keep going. You can move, as is often a requisite in games that require getting from A to B but he's so heavy and stiff on the controls that it feels less like I'm maneuvering Mr. Important and more like I'm lugging the git. The aiming and shooting mostly works, in that at least 50% of the bullets you fire go vaguely where you point them. It feels like there's a weird disconnect between your cursor and where you're actually firing at times, which only gets worse when elevation comes into the mix. It feels like I can't fire down from windows at shit, because Not Important is a man of the horizontal axis only. When you press a button to aim further, the camera violently fucking swings after it, ironically throwing off your aim. You've got a useless dodge roll, and a useful kick. Handy for you, not so much for the recipients, because the kick is generally followed up by an execution, and well, the executions, I'm generally weary of context kills in shooters, because I feel they break up the natural flow these games benefit from. They do work here because the game doesn't have a really quick pace to begin with, and it fits the theme the game is going for, being a cunt. They're also your sole way of regaining health. The selection of gear on hand is pretty standard. A pistol, shotgun, a couple of assault rifles, a couple of submachine guns, a flamethrower that I barely used, and a rocket launcher. It's a mostly down-to-earth arsenal for a down-to-earth mass murderer. You will mostly be using whatever the enemy is using, because that's where the ammo is at and because they're usually the best guns for the job besides. So, the controls are quite clunky, at times Not Important refuses to run and gun, and at times I swear he refuses to swap weapons, even as I hammer the button asking the fucker to please change his gun. The weapons at least feel punchy and they have decent sound effects. Shooting stuff has a feeling of impact, which is good, because if it didn't this game would be completely worthless. Even the basic pistol is quite satisfying to hit with, None of the weapons feel absolutely worthless, but none felt really interesting either, and the limited selection means there isn't much variance. All this said, you will mostly use a submachine gun or assault rifle, because as I've said, that's what most of the enemies have, and thus that's where most of the ammo is, and they're the most befitting of a game where you have to kill as many people as quickly as possible. Plus, in terms of what the game challenges you with, the shotgun, pistol, and flamethrower are just plain worse when enemies turn up. This is partly because enemies killed by fire can't be executed. The selfish burning pricks just die. So the flamethrower is both cumbersome and impractical. You lose health pretty quickly, so you'll want a few near dead about to regain health. It's also ultimately random if someone's shot dies outright or clings on to fuel your rampage. 
And if you do too much damage, they're right out. You simply killed them too hard. So, in a game about killing as much as possible, I'm also trying to do it softly, softly, so that I can kill them properly a bit later for my own well-being. This is some bizarre tightrope walking bullshit. But there is a lovely duality here. Not important needs to kill people, but he also needs people to keep killing people. So, you use these abilities and weapons, and you run about the seven levels the game has, and for the most part your only objective is to kill a certain number of people. And they do respawn infinitely. I love that. It makes Not Important come off as lazy and bored himself. Yeah, I definitely hate all of you, but I've met my quota. I mean, thank fuck it doesn't become a hunt for the last one alive. It really is a catch-22. Make the character look like he's half-arsing genocide, or make the game actively worse. There are also bonus objectives scattered around the map. Shooting at those grants a respawn point, because the game has a life system. They can be finicky, but the only other option is starting again right from the beginning, and some of these stages can take half an hour or more. And well, hatred can be surprisingly difficult. You can be gunned down very quickly as the game scales up resistance. The loading screen tips actively encourage running away and picking your fights cowardly, because you are just an everyman who can sprint indefinitely and take 20 bullets to bring down. No, I do like this aspect, and I do wish it would lead to more interesting games of cat and mouse. And the first couple of times you do escape from the police and bugger off, it's fun and rather rewarding. Sadly, it becomes clear very quickly that the police are just really easy to outrun, due to some very shit AI that doesn't know how to pursue you, or press their numerical advantage whatsoever. They can also see through walls, and they make no attempt to hide it. But then in fairness, I can also see them. And it's not like they're really intelligent enough to make use of this clairvoyance. The enemies did keep me on edge due to the one incident where they actually did all attack from multiple angles at once, and I was left a bit dead because of it, but it felt like a bloody fluke. Basically, this game is bad AI versus poor controls, and for the most part, bad control wins out. And even when I figured out not only how to game the AI's weakness, but that I basically had to to stand a chance, getting cornered always felt like a distinct possibility, and the open nature of the maps and ability to blow up parts of the environment did lead to interesting scenarios from time to time. For the most part, however, it just leads to you corralling the AI into approaching you in a single file line, picking them off one by one, because you're not really equipped to take them on in any other way, and there's no good reason to do otherwise. It's either this, or slowly edging through the maps, trying not to anger too many enemies at the same time and slowly whittling them down. It's not very thrilling either way. And the civilian AI is not much better. They don't seem to understand the concept of danger and in making distance from it. They will at times just charge towards you. Not to tackle you or really do anything to stymie your spree, but really just because they're thick as pig shit. Or is this some insanely risky and bizarre double bluff to make me think shooting them isn't even worth the bother? One detail I admittedly do like about the somewhat smarter citizens is that they will on occasion pick up dropped weapons and attempt to fight you, and while they don't help much, you've got to appreciate that they have a crack at it. Blowing up walls, like I mentioned earlier, well that was one of the features that was generally looked upon favourably, and it is bloody good fun, and a treat for the eyes. I didn't really mention them, but you do have grenades, and they are handy, alongside the myriad explosive canisters and jerry cans spread quite liberally on the maps, and blowing up the environment is both fun and practical. The first time I played the game I got cornered in a bathroom and I managed to make an escape by blowing a hole in the wall and then quickly bolting from the house. And it felt like a very dynamic and enjoyable encounter. It had a great sense of chaos about it. I've got nothing negative to say about the destruction, save for how arbitrary it is on certain maps. Some walls and props are indestructible, some due to oversight, others due to the level's intended structure, as a couple of stages do have a degree of linearity, and it's poorly handled there. Another feature that got mostly positive attention was the grayscale style. There are splotches of colour for blood, certain pieces of architecture, and televisions. It's definitely distinctive, but I'm ambivalent about it. For the first little while it's fine, but it very quickly makes everything blend together, and combined with a camera angle, it can make navigation and sighting enemies a bit of a strain at times. The level design does lead to some issues with navigation as well, as they're mostly nondescript suburban and urban areas. You don't have a map, you've got a radar, and you've got hate vision, but no way to navigate the map beyond memorization, and they're not all that memorable. Your only waypoint markers are objective markers, 
mostly optional objectives, mind. And once gone, they're gone. This only really got in my way once when I spent five minutes stumbling around looking for a gun shop I shot up earlier, because, well, I needed more bullets. Never found it. This is at most a minor issue, as for the most part, progress is murder, and that's in every direction. Another hindrance is the camera. Maybe not important is so angry because he just needs a pair of glasses. Aiming barely helps, and angling yourself to shoot around corners or through windows also feels picky as shit. This is both due to the view you have, and because of not important feeling really heavy. Be prepared to waddle back and forth across a window in what is possibly the least graceful display of semi-lethal window gazing you'll ever see. The targeting reticle also feeling a bit off makes sure that you can fuck up checking your corners all the time as well. And it makes lobbing grenades a crapshoot. Then you climb into a car, and the camera becomes even worse without actually changing. It's a gimmick you'll do once, and then only again when a mission requires driving or hand you a car with a turret on it. You'll mostly ignore them because the vehicles are weak as shit, exploding at the drop of a hat, or because I can't see where the fuck I'm actually going. Hello fuckers, I've invited myself. I'm not important. Never mind me. I mean, the game is challenging at times, especially so at the end, but it's generally not an enjoyable challenge because I feel ill-equipped for the job. Let's look at the stages overall. When I thought about it, I realised I only really liked two. There were three that were ultimately okay, nothing special, but not particularly bad either. And the last two can go hate fuck themselves. The last last less so than the second last. If I were to for some reason liken it to a Sonic game, Home is very much the grey hill zone of hatred. It's sprawling, interesting, it demonstrates the mechanics of the game well, and gives you a good playground to go have a fiddle with them. It also does something that none of the other stages do, and it's a great shame. Once you clear your kill quota, the final objective is to hit the police station where civilians are being sheltered because you just shot a bunch of them. None of the other missions have a follow through that's both this logical and interesting, and it makes the remaining stages feel relatively dull and static. The thing is, I'm not so much interested in the killing itself so much as the response the game has to it. And this is the one interesting reaction it has and is mostly just replaced by an ending wave of soldiers from here on out, which, while that makes sense, does not have the same element of challenge that the police station does. With the police station, you still have a good number of approaches for the building. Dart round the back, just walk up to the front, or blow a hole in the side of the building, or just pick off as much as you can from outside. It's a natural extension of the open structure the rest of the stage had, while still being a good challenge set on the game's terms. I guess after the police station incident, they just figured, fuck it, let the populace sort it out on their own. Two of the stages have linear segments. In fact, the opening of the second stage is a sewer segment, which is giving up the ghost on creativity pretty sodden quickly, if you ask me. The linear parts were what really betrayed hatred as average, if not poorly designed. It's easier to ignore in the open segments where you can fight on your terms, but it's here where it becomes clear when the challenge is more overtly laid out there's no good ways to approach firefights, there's shoddy cover, and a bizarre amount of near-dead homeless people you can heal from. The bit on the train was pretty fun. The background motion, cramped environment, and horde of people led to a decent sense of chaos. This game is lacking in interesting yet plausible scenarios for its killing sprees, so this stands out. And the game only really gets worse in the last two stages. Army base is the most impressive jump in difficulty I've ever seen. So... I did mention how the loading screens advise avoiding enemies and running away, right? Well, I wish someone told Not Important before he decided to one-man army an army base. Fucking hell, why are the fences around this place invulnerable? Oh yeah, it's because I have to stroll in through the front gate. 90% of the difficulty in this stage is getting through this gate. The other 110% is surviving beyond it. And this mission can take upwards of half an hour. You die without doing one of the pretty lethal side objectives for a shot at respawning, then fuck you, back to the start you go! What's that, you've got a respawn? Well fuck you anyway, chum! So, here's how you win. Drive to the forests on the side of the road and slowly pick off as much as you can, being careful not to get your car destroyed on the way in. Then get past the gate. Again, by slowly inching forward, then popping out of the turret to pick off soldiers. Then abandon the car and slowly inch around the base, trying not to upset too many soldiers at once. 
You see, there are enemies in every direction, and cover is not quite laid out as carefully to account for it, so approaching enemies is awkward as shit, and the first time you play, you have no idea which direction spell death. Well, actually, they all spell death, it's just that some capitalize it. Whilst you always know which direction your C4-based objective is, it's actually in your best interest to go back and forth across the base, slowly clearing it. Again, in a game about violent cathartic spree killing, I'm slowly plinking away at enemies standing at a great distance. Then there are Humvees which patrol the map. If you've got a rocket launcher, they're not so bad, but if they catch you off guard, say goodbye to your health while not important lumbers to get the rocket launcher ready. Also, don't be surprised if you're just instant killed by an enemy with a rocket launcher from off screen. That can happen. Fuck this stage. Luckily, there is a building full of unarmed civilians I can nip off to if I need some health. This is an argument against spree killing via boredom. The best part is, I am dead certain that this stage is only doable because of how bad the AI is. If the civilians knew to run away and the military toward gunfire, I would be shit out of luck. It's a slow slog, then you do it backwards out of the base. By the time you complete this stage, you will have pretty much mastered your interpretation of the very mediocre controls at your disposal. It is this stage which cements the fact that you are not built to fight enemies. After you've triumphed over them, isn't it oddly brilliant and fucking awful? And I want to reiterate that you can only go in through the front gate. I have been blowing up and driving through concrete walls for the last three hours. How bloody good is this chain link fence? Because I think it should be worse than this. I can't even really note the power plant mission taking place after it, because after the army base, you won't have trouble. It's far more linear, sure, and it has the same problem that the stage is not designed to make approaching enemies anything other than fiddly at best, but it doesn't matter. You will now be too good at the game for it to be anything other than a relative cakewalk. So go on and win, you heinous, hateful bastard. So, in the end, I enjoyed about two and a half stages out of seven. Home and downtown felt the most fit for purpose. Plus, it's bloody weird to say this, but beyond the first stage, it got a little bit silly, which was unavoidable. But it does detract something. By this I mean, it really feels like this game would have been far better served as one big free roaming map that worked like a challenge mode. And with that, it's also noteworthy that this game is completely lacking a challenge or survival mode, which it feels completely built for. The very fact that it had a plot, however loosely, and the character acknowledging how insane it is that he's getting away with it, it does detract, but at the same time it adds so much to the oddity. Ultimately, the game sold itself as a game about gunning down civilians, and while that may be cathartic, just endlessly gunning down people who don't fight back would get boring very fast. Then the enemies quickly become boring, routine, and frustrating to fight. Not Important isn't even built to gun down hordes of civilians all that well when you think about it. I mean, he's capable of it, but he's even less geared towards actually fighting, which, while that makes sense, does not translate into enjoyable gameplay. It could have been salvaged if the enemies pursued you in interesting ways and the open maps led to interesting chases, but due to how static the AI is, this does not happen very often at all. I think the moment that summarized the game for me was when I was playing the train level. I was gunning people down, there was screaming, explosions, and I just found myself thinking, eh, this train looks nice. The murder that is the sole thing this game has going for it became background noise so I can examine a virtual train. It happened more than once. You can only be shocked for so long if you're shocked by it at all, which I'm ultimately not and it became pretty obvious not just to me, but to many others who looked at this game, that underneath the controversy was just a very average game. To say it isn't fun would be lying, but to say it's a blast would not be true either. It's just interesting enough by half. I've shown this game to a couple of friends. When the announcement trailer came out, one friend said it looked like a very good stress ball, and I could see that. I handed the controls to another friend soon after getting the game and we both took a turn on the first stage, weighing up how we played and responded to threats and seeing how we both explored the first stage in different ways, and it showed the game at its height. If it had embraced its sandbox nature a bit longer, it would have been very interesting. And it kind of fell flat, and the stress ball thing didn't ultimately hold that much weight either, because the game actually becomes stress inducing and frustrating when enemies turned up and the later stages reveal just how shallow your ability to create chaos actually is. In the end, I can't really recommend Hatred, except as an example of marketing.